for our keynote speaker ladies and gentlemen oh my god are we, the speaker is set we have the energy everyone let's hear it once again are we all set okay it's quite decent okay let's have little more louder come on are we all set beautiful thank you so much i hope that helps you ma'am well i'm just going to quickly take a minute and introduce the beautiful lady on stage she is our keynote speaker who has been ranked in the top 1% in influence globally serving as a unique advisor to leading global technology companies such as Verizon, IBM, Dell, Ericsson. She has been named the number one most influential women in MarTech by B2B Marketing, recognized by Entrepreneur Magazine as one of the top online marketers to watch in 2018. And she will be discussing the future of marketing with us and how technology is changing everything. Please put your hands together as I invite on stage the CEO of Thulium, Tamara McClary. Let's hear it for her. Welcome. Hello, I'm Tamara McCleary and I'm from the future. I might be soon because I've already drank about 10 masala chais. So, you know, I kind of fall in love with chai, but you fall in love with chai when you arrive at like 2 a.m. in the morning, right? <laughs> but we are in the future here in India because it's already tomorrow from yesterday where I come from. Does that all make sense? <laughs> So the future is exciting to me because this is where we're headed. Journey with me, if you will. The first human being to live to the age of 200 years of age has already been born. In fact, if you follow Ray Kurzweil at all, he says that we might actually live to be a thousand years of age. How many of you are willing to live to a thousand years of age? Before you judge, oh, I've got a winner right here. Before you judge, how many of you are age 30 and under? Raise your hand. Okay, so here's what you may have in your future. Rejuvenation medicine has gone to heights in which you actually might, if you're alive in 20 years, you could rewind the clock to a younger state than you are right now. How many of you are age 50 and younger? Raise your hand. All right, guys, I'm in here too. We just got to hang on for another 20 years. And if we do, we could wind back the clock to somewhere in our 30s. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? And then live the rest of those lives. So we're not talking about living longer in an aged state. We're talking about living longer in a very youthful state, a much different understanding than we've ever known before. So when I look at the future, my background is healthcare technology. I started off in the 1980s, yes, the 1980s, as a registered nurse doing trauma nursing helicopter life flight. So I'm an adrenaline junkie. Then I went back to graduate school to become a molecular physiologist in which I became a cancer researcher, which is my interest in human technology. And that's how I got involved with artificial intelligence and machine learning. I have lost my signal. We're in the future, right? So when we look at the future, we have to take a glance around the corner at the past. And in the past, what we had was, is we had, you know, human beings using signals and signs, right? Wasn't it all about the, the um, you think of the cave walls with the handprints on it, right? And then we moved into a state in which we had uh, the printing press. And the printing press, what it did for us is it allowed us to communicate on such a massive scale to get ideas and thoughts out there, which changed the world. The next thing we saw was radio, then TV. We have an evolution of communication happening. 
Then the internet. How many of you remember when the World Wide Web came around? All right, so I was in Silicon Valley, and when the World Wide Web came around is when I shifted from science into creating technology companies. And by the time 2000 came around, I had sold my third tech company in Silicon Valley. The next thing we saw on scene was AI in our pockets. How many of you are carrying around artificial intelligence with you right now? Absolutely, and guess what? We have AI in our pocket, and we have come full circle to now communicating where we started from with gestures, haven't we? <laughs> Us humans, we're so predictable, aren't we? Now we have cloud computing, and cloud in the marketing sphere has absolutely shaken up our entire communication vehicle. Did you know within the next 10 years, less, you will be able to communicate with your pets? Did you know that? Yes, there's a device coming out. So if you've got a dog or a cat, you can point it at your animal and it will actually tell you what that animal is saying. Is that amazing? So how are we doing this? We're doing this with data, copious amounts of data. What does machine learning eat for lunch, breakfast, dinner? Data. So it's coming down the pike. And now, can you imagine the implications if you could communicate with animals? How they might be treated differently? My mind does wonder. Communication is changing, and I wanted to show you something a little fun. Hello, India. I'm so excited to be here with you in your wonderful, beautiful country. I'm having an amazing experience at TechMunch. How about you? Welcome to the future of marketing, my friends. It's all about experiences, and technology is changing everything, including how we have an experience. Is this not true? I believe, too, as we future project, we are going to be communicating through avatars and not necessarily who we are. I think we're going to be showing up to conference calls and meetings and video conferencing in which we can pick to be a lizard if we want to. We can be anything we want. And this is how our younger generation is also future casting. How many of you have kids in here? I know you're seeing this, right? It's a whole new generation. So our marketing success equation has a huge factor to do with humans, but I also want to caution you, I'm going to get into machines as well. Because that's really the sphere that I am steeped in is artificial intelligence and machine learning. But with humans, what do we know? Humans are captured through engagement with emotion. So when you have an emotional experience, we just sat here before I got on stage and watched a whole lot of video, didn't we? What were those video images doing? They were giving you music and sound and people's expressions. They were trying to engage you in that product that they were selling. And this is what we are always trying to do. When we talk about humanizing a brand, what are we doing? We're trying to connect emotion to grab people, to have them create an experience that aligns them to the brand. So these experiences are part and parcel of what I want to discuss with how we're going to use technology to craft unique human experiences for an emotional connection which draws in that brand loyalty. So artificial intelligence is helping us to have the engagement we're seeking. We're getting the data and analytics to be able to understand you know, that video we watched before when they were talking about when does this gentleman on social media, when is he checking email, when is he doing all of these things is context that we get through technology. So I want to show you another Hi, video. Hi, Tamara. Who's your favorite person at the show? You are. Aww. I think you're my favorite at the show. Thank you. Pepper, do you like it when they put you to bed? No way. <laughs> you want to stay awake, right? Of course. Pepper, what's your favorite movie? I 
Robots with Will Smith. So how many of you have ever been introduced to Pepper the Robot? Pepper's pretty famous, right? So what's really interesting about this robot is that through the robot's movements and the eyes, is it's interesting to see how people begin to attach to the robot. And it's interesting also how we project human emotion on a robot. So when Pepper has to be put down for the evening, they put Pepper to sleep. Just like a little child, Pepper doesn't want to go to sleep. And it's amazing how many people are like, oh, don't put her to bed. How do we even know it's a her? Everyone calls Pepper a her. This is what humans do. We project our humanity onto all kinds of things. And we're seeing this with robotics. Uh, I think it's interesting, too, when you look at human nature that we don't actually live in reality. None of us do. Everything's a perception. We have these stories going on that are only true in our own mind, and we project these stories out there, and we're doing it now with technology. I have another clip for you to see how this robot influences others. So we are now going to interview Sophia. Obviously, these are programmed answers that she's come up with, but it'd be fascinating to see how she actually interacts with us. What's the best thing about the UK compared to America, Sophia? I love your posh English accent. <laughs> it really has a nice ring. <laughs> but I have to ask now. I'll ask it. Are you single? I'm technically just a little more than a year old. A bit young to worry about romance. Quite right. <laughs> look at the smile. So did you, did you see that last thing that he said? He said, oh, look at her smile. What did he do when he saw the robot smile? He started projecting onto her, oh my gosh, she smiled. It's a robotic movement, but what do we do? We start to begin to put human characteristics onto robots. This is mind-blowing because I'm telling all of you that it's irresistible for humans to do. I see it day in and day out in all the technology conferences that I'm involved with in robotics. And it's really back to this whole thing. We haven't changed, like I talked about the history of communication, is that we never ever see things as they are. We see things as we are. And this is what's happening in technology, and this is how technology is shaping marketing. Because what's marketing about anyway? Think about what we're doing in marketing. We're trying to influence humans in such a way as to get them to take an action. If we didn't, there wouldn't be business, would there? Right? Isn't this the point of marketing? So technology is getting quite sophisticated, and we're moving from the old model, which is marketing to the masses. We are now creating a perception of marketing one-to-one. -one. We're still marketing to the masses, but we're doing one-to-one -one in the perception when we use technology and data to understand how each individual wants to be marketed to. So chatbots are another great example. So how many of you think that you can identify when you're seeing a chatbot that it's a bot or what if it's human? How many of you think you can distinguish between the two? Yeah, okay, so you willing to play a game with me here? Come on, tech monsters, who's in? All right, let's see. Read this, tell me if you think it's human or AI. So those that think this is human, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, and how many think it's AI? So wait, are there humans in this room? Because no one's raising their hand. Hey, in India, you're not afraid to take risks, are you? Hmm? I know you all have opinions. Let's try this again. How many of you think this is human? Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Come on, you're marketers. If you're going to be afraid, you'll never succeed at marketing right? Because it's all about risk. All right. How many of you think it's AI? All right. This is AI. Isn't that incredible? This AI was actually programmed for Shakespearean prose. 
pretty cool, huh? All right, you ready to play again? Are you getting braver now? Those of you that tasted success, you're ready to dive in, aren't you? Okay, read this, and we're going to do AI or human game again. How many of you say this is AI? Okay, how many of you say it's human? It's AI. Oh, see, it's, it's getting more clever, isn't it? It's a lot harder to judge. All right, let's try another one. Okay, how many of you say it's AI? All right, how many of you say it's human? Oh, it's AI. Now, are you starting to have your eyes wide open a little more, huh? Okay, one last one. Let's see. How many of you think that this is human? Okay, and how many of you say it's AI? This is Shakespeare. <laughs> you guys were so great at playing. Now I've got you warmed up, right? You ready for more? No. So this is just to demonstrate how sophisticated we are talking when we say technology is beginning to infuse itself into the very fabric of our human existence. Connected things. You knew I was going to have to talk about this. We are in a world where things are connected to other things which are connected to people. We absolutely have to rethink who our customer is. We are in a future where there will be a mix of selling to humans, but also selling to machines. That's right. You heard me correctly. We will be selling to machines. When you think about this, when you ask Alexa through your Echo a question, what's happening? going out and it's looking for the answer with its own knowledge base and that of its partner media brands as well. Also, it's sports broadcasting and it's music streaming services. If it doesn't find the answer there, it is now going to hit Bing to search the web. If you ask Siri, Siri's going to go to Google. Do you understand where I'm taking you guys here? What it means is, how are you shaping your programs to be able to influence the artificial intelligence layers going on in the different products? Because you realize they all are with different partners, different companies. So how is your product or service going to be offered up through the AI in a digital assistant? Do you see how now we're going to have to start marketing to machines as well? This is the future. When you look at our vocal interfaces, there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, voice is an absolutely powerful technology in that it's familiar, it's very human, it's comfortable, and it feels personalized. We've talked about storytelling and marketing forever, right, and content. This is a whole new level. And you know, this is not just another channel. This is as disruptive as digital and social media were within marketing. So think about how your products and services are going to be picked up, how those stories could be told, and how exquisitely, profoundly moving and inspiring and influencing it is to whoever's hearing that story that service, that product, at the right place and right time, which leads me to context, because as you realize, these things are with us all the time. When you're using your phone as a vocal interface, when you're using your device as a vocal interface, you may be involved in different activities at different times of day, and those contexts matter. And what I mean by that is, think about this. This is you at work. That's one context, right? You in a romantic relationship, a totally different context. You having road rage. Do you guys suffer from road rage in India? Traffic, just like, and it's a hilarious phenomenon because you realize psychologically when you're in your car and your vehicle behind the wheel, 
you would do and say things that you would never do in the presence of other human beings. So then here's the other context, you with your family. Context is everything, and when we talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, all these vocal interfaces, our marketing is gonna be dependent on the context with which someone is asking the question or using the device. Mobile is absolutely fascinating in how it's completely changed our culture. Completely changed our culture. How many of you would admit to checking your email during a holiday? I rest my case. We have all been assimilated and resistance is futile, right? It's there. This is a great stat. I think you guys will enjoy this. Did you know that 65% of us sleep next to our mobile phones more than we do our significant other? <laughs> Absolutely changed our culture. Mobile is powerful. But you know mobile is third, and what's even more powerful than mobile that I'm going to get into in my personal favorite is social media. Social media is the number one vehicle projected in 2020. So if your budget isn't focused on your social media strategy, we need to talk. Artificial, I mean, AR, VR, and mixed reality settings, we're talking about another context, another immersive experience. We've seen a great test case. I don't know if you guys ever caught this, but the very first 360 video, so a VR experience that the New York Times put together, The Displaced. Any of you seen that? So this was absolutely groundbreaking in the fact that so 60 million people, 60 million people are displaced due to war in our world. 30 million of them are children, alone, lost parents, don't have the family. And what the New York Times did is they did this incredible immersive experience in which they sent out these cardboard VR headsets to all of their subscribers to show them a more immersive experience. And they followed the lives of three children. And the kids talked, they told their stories, people could see it, they felt it. What happens to us when we feel like we're there, we are far more moved. If you read about something, you might think, wow, that's really terrible, and then you get on with your life, right? But when you have an immersive experience and you touch upon the pain and suffering of another, it's really difficult to turn a blind eye, right? Because you're actually placed in there. What was phenomenal about this incredible experience was that the social media outpouring from what the New York Times did, and mind you, think about this, New York Times, print media, it's something that everyone's like, oh, it's dying, it's going away to digital. If you saw the social media outpouring from this experience that they gave, they actually not only saved their subscriptions and their subscribers, they actually enrolled others into uh, the subscription service. It was absolutely incredible because what did they do? They did that equation I talked about. They engaged and they caught people with the emotion. And that gives people what? An experience. It was phenomenal. Social media is powerful. 85% of Gen Z actually makes purchasing decisions based on social media. Now, six years ago, I'm the CEO of Thulium. We're a global digital marketing agency, but we six years ago, I took us in the direction of focusing solely on social media. People thought I was crazy. What kind of a CEO says, we're gonna take the brand in one direction? I thought, you know what? I want to pick something and be the best at it. Because if you try to be all things to all people, you might be good, but you're not the best. I wanted us to fo focus solely on social, and those that thought I was crazy six years ago don't think I'm that crazy anymore. It was a risk, I rolled the dice, and we're definitely on target. So some of the brands that we work with are these, you may be familiar with some of them, and taking their social media globally in a way to have the immersive experience that I'm talking about. 
in a way that engages. No more just broadcasting and pumping out messages. It's more about having a conversation with your target market. It's about engaging them. It's about a brand that cares, involving the emotions, being transparent, humanizing the brand through this incredibly powerful vehicle. One of the things that we did a case study at Davos in 2018 for the Mercer brand, and you do have Mercer here in India, by the way, shout out to Mercer in India, is that at the World Economic Forum, we had an incredible time trying to lift the brand, highly competitive. Are you guys familiar with the World Economic Forum? Very, very, very competitive. And what we did is we took a slim marketing budget and we crushed the competition. And that's a lot of fun to do, right? We absolutely crushed them. So like, we had three times more share of voice than all the competitors combined. Mind you, we're talking about big competitors. We're talking about you know, Ernst & Young. We're talking about all of these other competitors with Mercer. And the only company that did better was Reuters. That's a media company. That's huge. So this was... 150 million reach that we did. We had one, per one person on the ground. You mind all these other companies literally wrapped buildings, massive marketing budgets. So with not having that budget, one person on the ground, we actually did this. So then the following year, this year, so I'm like, okay, that's great. What are we going to do for 2019? This is what we did. We did 500 million in reach and we also did 4,400% return on investment. This is the future of marketing to me is aligning with business growth. Marketing is no longer about 50% of my budget's working, I just don't know which 50%. You've heard that one before, right? We have to shift marketing. The only way marketing is gonna take a power seat at the table is to track attribution, to show return on investment, and to know that you're actually making a contribution to business growth. How many of you ever have been at the boardroom table and seen your marketing budget dwindle away and go to sales or go to product development? How many of you have ever experienced that? Like, high five, brother, I'm right there with you. So for me, my big thing is let's prove worth, let's prove spend. We can do that with technology now, and it's really exciting. I think it's so fun to be able to show the value of what you have been working on within your campaigns. Video, 80% of internet traffic is video. And I'm all about show me, don't tell me. And so I wanted to show you some of the things that we've just done recently. So Alicia Tillman is the global CMO at SAP, and her and I were at the South by Southwest. We did a video, we had 6,000 views. That was pretty good for South by Southwest. Then launched forward a couple more months later, and at SAP Sapphire, we did another one and we had 17,000 views. Video is powerful. This is a medium that people really seek out. So I would definitely say what you'd wanna do for a powerhouse combo is video paired with social media. Video and social media, these two most powerful vehicles that is so easy. You can do this on a shoestring budget. It doesn't take a lot of money, why? Because they don't even want professionally shot videos, what are they looking for? They're looking for transparency, in the moment, unfiltered. They want reality, and you're gonna give it to them. Blockchain, how many of you think blockchain is just for finance? How many of you have seen blockchain used in marketing? Blockchain is perfect. This is our future in marketing because we are going to be able to actually use customer data differently, track it, have a level of transparency. We can actually track what's going on with our media spend. Was it, do we have success with it? Here's some of the ways in which blockchain, I think, this is just the tip of the iceberg, by the way. It's absolutely phenomenal what we're gonna be able to do, and it's limitless. So some of the things we can do is it's strengthening trust because transparency is really important right now. People are afraid. They don't trust because there's so much fake news, fake followers, bots. They don't know what's real, but blockchain is helping us to prove.
and show that transparency. We can verify delivery and the efficacy of advertising. How many of you would love to see how your advertising budget is really working for you? You can track it. You can see it. No more guessing. You can pay customers for the interaction with your content. Don't you think that's a great incentive? Paying your customers to interact with your content? You can also pay them for their data. I think this is really important as people start to get very savvy about what data they're giving, how it's used, you can track it. And this is incredibly important globally as we see now uh, laws coming into play to say, how are you using data that you're capturing? You can verify true influencers in influencer marketing. All right, I have to ask you here, how many of you can track whether or not someone has real followers or fake followers? We can guess, but wouldn't it be nice to know what the level of engagement that person has and is there engagement with your target audience? Because popular doesn't sell. Popular might get noticed, but I'm interested in business growth. How about you? I'm not interested in popularity. I'm interested in performance. I want to see execution and performance, and I want the spend to get ROI, return on that investment. And we can track who is actually influential to our target market versus just guessing based on followers, which is really, really a poor way of guessing. You can create new transparency loyalty programs for your consumers. Again, this is just tipping the iceberg. There's so much going on in blockchain for marketing. How I'd really like to, to end our short time together is to challenge you all to take a look at how you're crafting marketing toward business growth. Marketing must be aligned to the business. You must be able to have those conversations with your CEO. You must be able to sit at the table and be not only a contributor, but have a power seat. You deserve that. How do you do that? Data-driven marketing. This is what technology is delivering for you. It's giving you strength. Owning that customer experience. It's the experience economy. People want that experience. You have to own it. And it's your job to be the voice of the customer. This is what marketing is all about. It's also your job to stand up for transparency, privacy issues. This is your market, your people, you care, you're developing that trust. And humanizing the brand through the powerful vehicle of technology. Technology is enabling us to humanize the brand. And this is the exciting part for me. And please, if I leave you with anything, don't forget this one thing, and that is, it's not just human to human that we're marketing to. I'm going to tell you right now, you have got to jump on this now or you will be left behind. We are marketing to machines, absolutely. Take a look at how you're positioning your entire spend and your product to be able to harness and tap into those vocal interfaces. How is your product or service going to be brought up? If someone asks a question and you're not tapped in, it's going to go somewhere else. So we're marketing machine to machine. I'll leave you with my last little technology piece. Thank you, Tech Monch. I very much enjoyed my time with you and my first trip to India. I hope you've had a delightful experience. Let's please stay in touch. Message me at innovateatthulium.co. Thank you so much. It'd be a pleasure to stay connected. If you're interested in these topics and you have a passion for it like I do, I would love to hear from you. This is my email. And then, of course, you guys can find me all over social media. And uh, connect with me at Tamara McCleary. And it's just at Tamara McCleary because I can't remember anything else. But everywhere, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And any of you following me on Instagram already know I did have those 10 chais. I swear I took pictures of all of them. Thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you. Could I request you to be on stage for a couple of seconds more? And I would request Fazan A. Rahim, the co-founder of Ventus Avenues, to please join us and present the token of gratitude to ma'am. Let's hear it once again for Ms. McClary. Thank you so much. <laughs>